Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to look at manners in England. Here are the things that, that are considered polite and the things that are not considered polite. So this is a talk about the culture, things that people do here in England and the things that traditionally have been the most acceptable behaviour. Let's start with the things that are very important. So I'm sure you already know this one. English people when queuing, queuing is when you stand in a line when you don't when you want something. You don't just like run up there to the front or push. You queue in a line. So we queue up at the bank, for example, or we queue up when we want to get on a bus and there's some other people already there. Now, of course, in London, because there are so many people and also not everyone is English, so they have the manners from where they came from, you won't always see people queuing to get on the bus or on the tube. But you, you do generally still see people queuing up in a shop when they need to buy something. Next we have, it's very important to bring a bottle. And that means when you go to somebody's dinner party, you take a bottle of wine when you go to the meal there. If you don't want to bring a bottle of wine, you can bring dessert or you can bring some flowers or some chocolates. But the, the, phrase, the general phrase and the general idea of it is bringing a bottle as in a bottle of wine. Next we have RSVP. This is a term that comes from French. Respondez-vous s'il vous plaît. And this is a much more formal invitation that you get if you're going to something, a special event like somebody's wedding because weddings are really expensive and they have to be organized so long in advance, people having the wedding really want to know if you're coming. So when you RSVP to the invitation, it means you're definitely going, you will be there. So once you've RSVP'd, it's very, very impolite not to go. You must go if you RSVP. Next, I think that in England, it's very important to be on time. We do tend to be punctual people, attend, attend meetings at the right time, turn up to our jobs at the right time, or meet friends at the right time. Most of us, of course, there are those people who are always late for everything, but most people in general do things on time, or even like me, I always end up being 10 minutes early. I, I just can't help that. So I waste a lot of time being too early. Now let's look at table manners. Some of the things in the table manners section are changing as people become more relaxed about eating and eating out. But these were all, these are all manners that people follow in more formal situations. Perhaps at home or with your very close friends, it would be different. Now, I don't mean it's different for this first one. I'm not saying it's ever acceptable anywhere to slurp, burp. I can't do a burp noise. Anyway, you know what a burp is. And fart, farts and noise from the other end. These things are never acceptable at the dinner table. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So no eating noises or doing that when you eat. It's not acceptable. Elbows on the table. In a formal situation, you're not going to do that. But relaxed with friends, a lot of people do put their elbows on the table these days. Not such a big deal. Drinking before, um, just drink, just drinking your drink before somebody said cheers is considered impolite. But it's also a sign of being familiar with people. If you're familiar with them, you don't have to go, Oh, cheers for this drink and opportunity to drink with you. So it depends who it is. Using a mobile in the restaurant or when you're eating socially with people is considered rude. So to be like, oh, hold on, let me just take this call. I'm so important. I've got to, you know, talk business or something is considered rude. Or to be like all the time texting on your phone. Of course it happens. And young people and teenagers are definitely going to do it more than older people. But on the whole is considered impolite. 
eating with hands. That's something that's changing as I suppose we all get more used to a fast food culture and different kinds of foods that are just easier to eat with your hands like burgers, chips, chicken wings and some Mexican food. Easy, it's easy to eat with hands so yeah, it depends what you're eating but traditionally it would be considered rude to eat anything other than a sandwich with your, with your hands. Okay, let's talk about what's impolite now, what's opposite. Um, no, it's not the, these are more things that are impolite, but different situations. Let's imagine the situation of being on a train. It's, in, it's impolite to talk really loudly on the train and just have your really loud conversation on the phone that everybody can hear for hours on the, or the whole time you're on the train. It's impolite and it's really annoying. Also, if you haven't noticed, trains in England, if they, particularly ones that go long distance, they have a silent carriage. <laughs> and that means a part of the train where don't talk here, do not talk here. Nobody wants to hear you talking. So there's, there's always that refuge, that place you can go on the train if you don't want to hear people, but it's only one small space and the rest of the train's really big. It's also impolite to push in. Oh, I've got to get on this train now. So, but it happens all the time in London. It's, it's impolite to eat smelly food on the train. Now a sandwich is okay. You get hungry. A a um, packed lunch that you brought brought from home, maybe you've got some cold pasta left over or whatever you made at home, it's fine. But if it stinks, it's not fine. You know food that stinks, it's usually fast food, like a McDonald's or from a fried chicken place or something. Impolite to eat this on the train and impolite to even take it on the train because it smells so strong. But anyway, people do it. Impolite to sit there in your chair all, all nice and comfy when the poor old old person is like with their walking stick and you know they're going to fall over when the, when the train slows down. It's impolite to leave them standing while you sit down. The same applies to pregnant women and to disabled people. So if you haven't noticed on the tubes, I don't know if they're on the, on the trains, but on the tubes there are special seats that if you sit in those, you must get up for the elderly people or the disabled people. But um, if you really don't want to give up your seat to anyone, don't sit in one of those chairs. You can sit more in the middle on the tube and you're very, in a very unlikely situation anyone would expect you to get up. Next, we've got holding the door open. This isn't, this isn't something that happens on the train. This is when you're coming out of a building, the door's heavy. And as you come out, you hold the door open and you just wait one and a half seconds so that person behind you comes. You hold it until they come and they take over. You don't have to, you don't have to like look at them a long time or it's not a big deal. You just hold the door open and then you carry on. You hold the door open for them. Not like, oh, I'm so busy, I can't wait one and a half seconds, boom, in the next person's face. That's impolite. Next, we've got not apologizing when you bump into someone. This is when you walk down the street and you didn't mean to, but someone, you know, like walks into you that's bumping in or more pushing. If you don't say anything like, mm, then that's rude. You're meant to say, oh, sorry, sorry about that, and carry on. It happens sometimes in a busy city that you're going to bump into someone, but the point is whether you are polite after you say something. Next, it's not polite when you have a friend with you and you meet somebody else you know, and you talk to them, but you ignore that other person there. Like, 
leaving them to just wait while you have the long conversation without introducing them. What's polite is to say, oh, Julie, this is Sarah. Sarah, this is Julie. And then you can carry on the conversation. Next, let's talk about things to do with the body. These are the kind of things that are more likely to make people disgusted actually and feel sick and like, yeah, that's so gross. Starting with spitting. Spitting on the floor, spitting in public. I've even seen spitting inside one or two times, which is pretty gross and disgusting and pretty shocking when I've, when I've seen it. But yeah, uh, you, see, you see things like that around London, spitting on the floor, but it's very, very bad manners. And it's also a health hazard. Not, it's not cool, makes people sick. Next is body odour. Now I'm not talking like, <laughs> there's different, different degrees of body odour, right? Some people are just really, really stinky and they don't mind. That kind of stinkiness is considered impolite. And especially if you're kind of stinky and you, you're on the tube and you've got your arm out like that and you know, other, someone else is standing there having to smell your stinkiness. It's not very nice, it's impolite. Next, we've got shoes. So it's kind of the opposite here in England about shoes. If I know you really well and you're a good friend, you can come in my house, take your shoes off. If I know you really, really, really well and you're part of the family, you can be barefoot in the house, right? But if I don't really know you, please keep your shoes on. Please keep your shoes on. Do not touch my floor with your feet. So it's the opposite to how it is in many countries. So from the other, other people's side, they might find us really gross because in English homes, not so much more now, but traditionally we always had carpets in our houses. And it's not like the carpet's always being washed and cleaned. It's being hoovered, but not actually washed and cleaned. And we walk around it with shoes on. So a lot of people find the idea of the English floor in their house really gross. Because in other countries, there's a floor that's easier to clean, you know, with water or a mop. Uh, so it's, it's different here. Anyway, don't take your shoes off unless somebody offers you. or Well, it's not really an offer. Unless someone invites you to take your shoes off because that's the rule in their house okay so don't don't just do it first and by the way when I um a little little story here it was it was uh, one of those hard to handle cultural experiences when I was living in Turkey and a, a workman came to fix the window or something and I didn't know how to say in Turkish keep your shoes on I wish I did <laughs> Because he took his shoes off and um, the, in, in Turkey, they're meant to give you slippers if you're not, if you're, um, you're just visiting, they give you slippers to walk in the house. I'm glad I didn't give this guy slippers either. His feet were the most stinking feet. Oh, it just smelled so bad. And he fixed the window for about one and a half minutes. And I was cleaning the floor for about two hours to get this stinky foot smell out after. So if I, if I did give him slippers, they would have been, they'd have to go in the rubbish bin. So if it hadn't been their rules there, it had been the English rules, he'd have kept his shoes on. I wouldn't have smelled, I wouldn't have smelt his stinky feet. It would have been much better the English way. But anyway, I didn't know the language to say that. Next, let's talk about baby changing. Baby changing, um, baby changing is for in the baby changing room in or where the toilet is there's normally a place to do that and baby changing doesn't happen around places where you eat food again i'm reminded of turkey here because i did see a, a nap a baby's shitty pooey pooey nappy being changed on a restaurant table which i thought was really gross and i never knew it happened before i went there but anyway i haven't seen it here in england but on the in the restaurant table 
But point being, there are special places to change the baby here. The next one is an issue that people, people have strong views about and people disagree, which is breastfeeding in public, feeding your baby milk in public. Some people don't like to see that and they consider it to be um, something that the woman should do with a scarf over the baby or they think you should do it in a quiet place. And other, other people say, it's natural, you should be able to do it wherever you want. And people argue about this. Uh, depending on where you are, you'll either see it a lot or you won't see it at all. Um, yeah, so in, in London, in certain, in certain areas, uh, where there's, it's, let's say, a very middle class kind of area where there's lots of middle class mums and their babies, breastfeeding you will see, but in just the general local area, you, you wouldn't necessarily see baby being breastfed in public. Next one is noisy sex. Um, obviously noisy sex happens, but there's degrees of it. Um, I've lived in shared houses with young people, so I've, de I've definitely heard sex, but it was absolutely not in the same league of how loud it was to what I heard when I was in Peru staying near the Amazon, uh, in somewhere near the Amazon jungle in a hotel. And then I heard the noisiest sex I've ever heard in my life. So it's degrees of how loud it is, I suppose. In general, it being England, it's, it's not, even when it's loud, maybe it's not so loud as some other places. Next, in the toilet, when you do your business in the toilet, especially if it's a pooey business, try and flush that away. If you do a pooey business in somebody's house, but I think anywhere, and it gets all brown in the toilet, there's the brush next to the toilet, which is to clear away the pooey stuff in the toilet. That's why it's there. Some people, I don't think they realize that what's what the brush is for. And um, mm, yeah, so you might also be puzzled when you go to the toilet. Where is the water? Where is the water here? There's no water for cleaning myself. There isn't in the English, um, the English toilet. I don't want to get into it really other than that. But if you're surprised about where the water is, let's just say it's, it's not there. Maybe you bring your own as a solution, but don't leave a mess after. Next, stinky perfume. Now, on the one hand, we've got stinky people who don't make any effort to smell good. They, they enjoy it, I suppose. And then on the other hand, you've got people who think they smell nice by putting on loads of perfume, but they put on so, so much perfume, they actually smell stinky. So that when they walk, you can smell them like two minutes behind. That is, that's what stinky perfume is. And um, I guess here, uh, because it's such a strong smell, that's why people don't like it and don't find it that polite. Next, let's look at social etiquette. When um, you're meeting a friend, generally because the arrangements, depending on the person, are made a few days in advance here in England. We're not so spontaneous and easygoing, most people. So they plan before. And if you make that cancellation right at the last minute, many times, unless it's a real problem that you had, people will always think, fair enough, you had a big problem, it's okay. But if you didn't have a big problem and you cancel right at the last minute, the person will think that's really rude that you did that. Um, and if you cancel one or two times in a, in a row with that person, they might be angry with you and they might not want to make another arrangement with you because they just think, oh, unreliable. Next, we have showing up unannounced. This is a, a shortened unannounced here. 
that means just coming to somebody's house, ringing the doorbell any any time, but they didn't know you were coming. Here, it, um, I would say it doesn't happen that much, only with friends who've known each other a really long time. And said, like, uh, people I know who do that to my mum, for example, are uh, her neighbour friends that she's known for years and they don't show up and then like sit sit there for three hours. Maybe there was something they wanted to say for five minutes or a short time. It's not like, hey, here I am, now let's hang out for hours. Generally, that doesn't happen a lot. But it might happen if you're a student or a young person. If you think it happens, let me know in the comments. But I would say traditionally and for older people, it, it just doesn't happen much. Next is name dropping. Name dropping is when you're always saying about all the famous people you know. And um, well, sometimes it isn't even about the famous people you know. It's about when you saw the famous person or you worked somewhere where you helped the famous person. But that's like the low level of name dropping. The high level of name dropping is always about oh, my friends are so important and uh, I'm always with these special people and they, they get a bit boring because they're always talking about these special people they know. Next is um, something that I have done a few times in my life, well, more than a few. It's called French leave, right? This, I don't believe, is the English term for it. This is um, how I've known... People in other countries talk about it to me, right? I don't believe we have an English word for it, but this means when you've been hanging out with some people or you've been at a party and instead of saying, oh, bye, I'm going now, you just leave. <laughs> you, don't, you don't say you're going, you just decide to go. Now, why does such a thing happen? In my opinion, you've been at a party, the host is there, but there are so many people there you don't really need to go and say goodbye to the host because they're going to still have this party for hours. If you go and say goodbye, then all other people might try and make you stay and things like that. No, I'll leave it. I'll just, I'll just go. It's fine. That's why I personally do it. It would be really doing a French, you know, not saying goodbye when it's just you hanging out with one other person. I think that's quite a different situation. That uh, I've never done that before. I mean, in a situation where there's a lot of people there. Okay, next one is talking over somebody. Some people have a thing about this, that if you're talking and somebody interrupts and starts speaking at the same time, some people think, oh, that's awful, it's so terrible, oh no, they've spoken. And so, what some people do when that happens is they just stop talking. So you spoke of me, I cannot speak anymore. But it's not very effective because if somebody talks over you, they don't care and they're not going to stop. You will just be listening. So um, my, my thoughts on this, are, okay, yeah, it's impolite. But sometimes you never ever get a chance to speak if you don't talk over someone because people don't, other people don't stop. So depending on the people, how much they talk, sometimes you need to talk over people. Or sometimes if you've got an idea that you really need to say, then you can talk over it. That's what I think. Next is unruly kids. This is when the parents just like ignore the kids and the kids are all like, yay, jumping on things and running around and um, shouting, but in a place that's not the playground or the park. They're doing it in another public place, like a cafe or a restaurant or a train or a bus. If your kids are unruly like that, then it gets annoying to other people. Really, really annoying. When I was on the bus yesterday, actually, there was some unruly... Well, they, I just suppose they weren't unruly. It was just a bit odd because the mum was talking to her kids really loudly in such an extra way, saying, okay, let's play I Spy now. And 
I spy, I spy tea. Oh, it's tree. But this went on for about 35 minutes on the bus. Like, I don't care. I don't care about how, how much of a good parent you are. <laughs> I don't get, care how good your parenting skills are. So those kids weren't really unruly. It was just more that um, you couldn't, you couldn't forget that there were some kids on the bus because it was being made into like a big, big fun bus trip. Next, there's littering. Littering is when you get your garbage and you just go, oh, I don't care. And you walk off and you leave it there. Uh, it's, it's not nice to be a litter bug leaving your rubbish around and especially never ever in any kind of natural area like a park or a beach. However, it's a very different situation in Dubai because um, I used to live near the beach there and walk on the beach every day. And there, um, the, local, the locals would come, come to the beach with their McDonald's or whatever, eat the McDonald's on the beach and just, just leave it, just leave it there on the beach. Oh, we finished eating, let's go now. Someone will clear it up after me. Well. Someone obviously did always pick it up after them, but if you try and do that here, that's like a, that's a sin against nature. It's terrible. Okay, last one is playing music loudly from your speakers. That would be um, sharing your music with everyone who doesn't necessarily want to listen to what your music is. So you didn't ask everyone, Oh, hey, do you want to listen to my uh, dubstep or whatever, my drum and bass? You just start, you just start playing it loud. Like this music is, this is cool. This is cool. But everyone else is like, I can't stand you. But it doesn't have to be dubstep. dubstep. It could be like pop music or even pop music that's so loud from your headphones that other people can hear. That's pretty annoying. And that, that, that gets boring after... 20 minutes on the bus having to listen to it or whatever. So yeah, here, here are the things that are considered polite, impolite, and uh, bear these in mind next time you come to England, London, or the UK. Now you can take the quiz on this lesson. I'll see you again soon. Bye.